some of the variants of dropout that we've been experimenting with. Um, so I have some experimental results, and um, I have three variants that I'm going to talk about. So everyone probably knows what the dropout of algorithm is by now, but just to recap, it's a modification of the standard backpropagation with gradient descent in which each training iteration we remove some of the neurons in our network. And we remove them independently with probability R. And at prediction time, we divide all the weights by, or we multiply all the weights by R, and we get a deterministic prediction out of the network. So this seems kind of crazy, but the motivation for doing this, there's two main motivations. One of them is that we have this understanding that we are efficiently training a large ensemble of different neural networks with uh, tied weights. So this might be an efficient way of doing massive ensemble averaging. And the, the final deterministic prediction approximates the average of this ensemble. And the theoretical, we've, we've, theoretical work we've done shows that this is a reasonable approximation. The other interpretation of what's going on with dropout is that this noise added to the neurons keeps them from depending too much on each other. And so there's this interpretation of a, a regularization method. Now, there's lots of ways to add uh, randomness to the network, and dropout is just one of them. So I'm going to discuss three more variants of dropout that add noise to the network in different ways. So first I want to introduce this formalism. Um, we can think about dropout as each neuron computing three different values. So the first two values that we're computing are the standard deterministic uh, computations of a neuron. Um, we have S, which is the weighted linear sum of the inputs. Um, the activation O is the output to the sigmoid function. So we're, we're assuming logistic units. And the final computation is stochastic. So delta is the value this neuron is sending to the neurons in the next layer. And in dropout, delta is O with probability R, and zero with probability one minus R. So this is the formalism that we're going to use um, to uh, understand our other uh, variants of dropout. So the first variant I want to talk about was actually proposed by Jeff Hinton in one of his dropout talks. And that's the idea of this spiking neuron, uh, stochastic spiking neuron. So instead of sending a real value to the next layer, what we're actually going to do is send an all or nothing spike from each neuron. And we're going to do this in a very particular way. Um, we're going to send an all or nothing spike of size R with probability O. So remember, O is the activation or the output of the sigmoid function. Um, you can see that the, in both cases, dropout and the spiking neuron algorithm, the expectation of the output of each neuron is the same. The variances will be different, but the expectation will be the same. So we implemented this, and I, I'm here I'm replicating the dropout results from uh, the original dropout paper. And I'm comparing it to this spiking neuron algorithm. And we can see that the spiking neuron algorithm doesn't converge as quickly. But it does train a multi-layer neural network. And this is pretty surprising because uh, the spiking neuron restriction is kind of a big constraint. So this is, this is the first variant. Um, and the next one, so in variant two, we ask the question, what happens when we perform dropout or something like dropout in the back propagation step? So suppose we forward propagate deterministically 
and then instead of the standard backpropagation algorithm, we're going to send gradient signals backwards, but we're only going to send gradient signals through a subset of the neurons in each layer. Now, we're going to do this in a particular way, such that the gradient update for each weight is exactly the same as gradient descent in expectation. So it's going to be a stochastic uh, backpropagation, but the, in expectation, each weight is going to get uh, the true gradient update. And we call this algorithm backpropagation because we're percolating the gradient through the layers. So how do we do this? So in standard backpropagation, when the gradient comes through a neuron, we multiply by the derivative of the transfer function. Instead, we're going to transmit the entire gradient with probability equal to the derivative of the, of the transfer function. So for a sigmoid neuron, the derivative of the transfer function is O times 1 minus O which is always between 0 and 0.25. So we're interpreting that as a probability. And because the gradients, because this is all linear, the expectation of the weight update in the lower layers is going to be the true gradient, even though this is all stochastic. So because this is stochastic, it's actually harder, it's, it's actually harder to train a neural network in this way. Um, but it does train a multi-layer neural network. Here we're comparing to backpropagation, and you can see that backpropagation trains faster. But this backpropagation algorithm does train, and we haven't really explored all the parameters that might help make this work. Um, but one thing to note is that if you turn the learning rate down to a very small value, it's going to be exactly the same as backpropagation. And this is interesting because a, a lot of the argument against the biological pl plausibility of backpropagation is that you, know, you can't transmit very small real values. And backpropagation might be a way of getting around this. So I have one more dropout variant to discuss, and it's actually very simple. It came from this observation that um, in both these, in both dropout and the spiking neuron algorithm, you just have the expectation of the output uh, be the same, and we're just adding noise to each neuron. So the simplest way of adding noise is just to add Gaussian noise to each neuron. Um, so we do this, we add this noise term with mean zero and uh, standard deviation sigma, and intuitively we can tune this sigma to increase or decrease the amount of noise we add to each neuron, which corresponds to increasing the regularization or decreasing the regularization. So I'd like to point out that this is very similar to dropout. Um, there was these two motivations for dropout. One was that we decreased the neuron dependencies in each layer. Additive Gaussian noise will definitely do that. And the other, interp the other interpretation motivation for dropout is that we are uh, performing some kind of massive ensemble averaging. Now, additive Gaussian noise actually has that interpretation also. In dropout, your ensemble average is over all possible dropout subnetworks. But with additive Gaussian noise, you're performing this ensemble average over um, networks with different noise terms added to each neuron. If we replicate the dropout results in the paper, and then we also, with all the same parameters, just do it with additive Gaussian noise, we actually get better results. Um, so this is on the MNIST data set. Uh, you can see that the additive Gaussian noise algorithm trains faster and still achieves better generalization there. Um, on MNIST, I mean, this isn't a huge difference, but uh, 
it supports the claim that additive Gaussian noise is doing something very similar to dropout. And finally, I just want to say that uh, we use this additive Gaussian noise in a machine learning competition. Uh, this was on microarray data and protein phosphorylation. And we actually did very well uh, just using this uh, regularization method. So we, we got second place in one of the sub-challenges of this competition. And we would have gotten first if we hadn't flipped the probabilities, if we hadn't flipped the labels on our submission. <laughs> which was a mistake that cost us both first place and $20,000. Uh, so that was kind of sad. But we, were, we were happy when we figured it out that uh, this method did work and we were actually doing quite well. So in summary, dropout is just using a certain type of stochastic neuron. And there are many other ways of adding noise to your neurons such as this spike, spiking algorithm and additive Gaussian noise. Some other people here at NIPS have been using uh, Poisson distribution noise. And th this other algorithm, back percolation, is a type of dropout in the back propagation stage of learning. And it's very interesting that the expectation of the sto stochastic update is exactly equivalent to the true gradient. Thank you very much.